Welcome back. Um, it's still Wednesday, February the 27th. My guest in this segment is Mehdi Najari. We're going to be talking about, I guess, uh, more local politics and issues. Uh, so Mehdi, you, you wanted to start off, or I'll phrase it like this, does it matter who we vote for? NDP, Liberal, Green? Yeah. Jack, I have been, you know, I've been here for 31 years. Uh, I came from a state and within a year I realized that uh, what, what I see is not really what's going, what is going on, you know, in the surface. So we saw, we went through the election of the NDP in 1990s, and uh, I remember I was talking to you walking from Sierra Club office in, Pando in Pandora Street and was saying that, uh, Jack, I'm sorry, I have bad news for you. NDP is not going to do what they promised to do. And I didn't believe you? Yeah. And what, what it is... you were 100% right. What <laughs> it is, people, uh, people think, uh, peop we have a basic assumption that we live in democracy, we have choices to make. Every four years we can go and choose the government we want. And if we don't write the right-wing government, we choose the left-wing government. But the problem is, after the election, we see the policies is remain the same. It's the continuation of the last government. And that is the problem. As long as we grasp into that illusion that we have democracy, as long as we grasp into illusion that we have choices, then we are going to go wrong. We are, because we are looking at the political landscape through that frame of thinking. And that is a wrong frame. That's why we go wrong. There is no, not much difference between NDP and liberals. Both work for the, for the interest of big corp corporations and elite. That's why we see when NDP come to power, Site C Dam will continue. Site C Dam is there to produce energy for, for, for the LNG. And the LNG the, and the energy that they produce in Site C is going to cost us maybe over $100, uh, $100 for, gigawatt hour, uh, for, for, uh, for kilowatt hours. But then we were selling it for 50 to the LNG because that's the only way they can make money. So we, we encourage fossil fuel industry. We destroy the aquifers. We, get involved with the creating much worse than coal in terms of a greenhouse gas effect because it's a release of methane. LNG is a total, is a total disaster, disaster, but the NDP support it and give more tax cuts in order to, to get it going. We see, for example, in fish farm, the NDP make decision to reduce the 10 fish farm, maybe, maybe by the year 2022, maybe, we get rid of 10 fish farm in Brighton Archipelago. But how about the rest of the 100, 120 more fish farm? Nothing. So they make a decision based on manipulating, for example, in this case, maybe the natives, you know, uh, and, 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 the, uh, and other people. But the decision is not based on science. The scientists are not there to say fish farm devastating the wild, wild salmon runs. And that's why we have... I think that's the plan. I think the, the only reason... I, I mean, I think they want to get rid of the wild salmon. Yep. And they're doing it. You see on BC Ferry, the, the Liberal government take it and, and make it as independent company. Yes, it's, just, it's still under the, the control of the government, but, but it's independent. And NDP promise, when they come to power, they bring it back as, as a crown corporation. Now that they are in power, they say, oh, no, we don't want to do it. And I tell you why. The reason is that the next liberal government or next so-called right-wing government will privatize it. In 2001, let's talk about ICBC. In 2001, when Gordon Campbell came to power, every, the media was talking about the fact that ICBC may get uh, privatized. But there was a problem. The rate for ICBC uh, customers was much, much lower than, than the rate for the, for the, from the private insurance. And the private insurance... And, and in other places in Canada. In other places in Canada. ICBC was the second lowest in Canada at that time. Behind so, only Manitoba. I, I believe behind Manitoba. Which is also public. Yes, it's public. But, but then if you privatize it and create a big, big rate increase, people are going to revolt. So what they do, they said, let's 
let's uh, de destroy ICBC first. So what do they do? They raise the speed limit. They, uh, they, inc they reduce enforcement. They, uh, they get rid of photo radar. The huge amount of crashes happen because of that. Here, here, is, a, here is an article by Vancouver Sun, uh, October 10, 2018. The headline is, a speed limit hike by former BC government led to vastly more fa 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 fatality, injuries, crashes, a study said. So, and, and by doing that, also they created much more litigation, so the cost went up hiring more lawyers and also f I remember in 19 uh, in 2000 or 1990s when you go have an accident you go to ICBC first they evaluate the, uh, the cost and they send you with a vulture to the yeah. private body ICBC shop. ICBC looks at it and says it's going to cost two thousand dollars to fix. Go but, to the but after the liberals came to power we go directly to the private body shop and they decide how much right. they are going to cost. So they created a huge cost. Wow. You know and then they took money out of ICBC, billions of dollars out of ICBC, right. create an ICBC that it has deficit. Yes. How do they do did that? Let me show you why they are doing this, or how. There was a advertising for, for having uh, 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 the, the, kind of, the kind of executive the BC government want to hire. Right. And, and this, in, is, this is in the paper describing what the top executives' that jobs are. The and, and requirement for top executives that the government want to hire in 2010. One of the conditions is this. At times to capitalize on the best opportunity, executive create a crisis to force change. So if the public doesn't want to change, you create crisis. You, you do all those things to ICBC in order to create deficit, and now, today, what the, uh, Mr. Wilkinson, the leader of the, uh, lib leader, leader of the Liberal Party said in a tweet, uh, when ICBC problems came out the last few, few weeks, he said, send ICBC to wrecking yard. Yeah. Get rid of it and, and create and, and let, let the free enterprise take over. So we see that they intentionally destroying ICBC. This is not a mistake. This is not a mess. This is fraud perpetuated on the, on the people of this province, and nobody is being prosecuted. We don't have any public inquiry. It all looks like they are working hand in hand. To and me. they are. And, you know, they did the same thing with BC Hydro. The, uh, let me just interrupt. There is no reason that over the last 10 years when these things were happening, that members of the NDP could not have had their own show on this community television station telling people about all the stuff that you've just told people. They don't because they're, they're as much a part of it as the Liberals they're are. They're going just, along with corporate agenda. They are creating a phony opposition, so people think there is an opposition, they are watching for our interests. And the opposition and it, does nothing. It, it is nothing. And they did the same thing with BC Hydro. The, the, the government came and, and prevented the BC Hydro to, to produce more energy, to produce more energy, and, uh, and said the only people that can produce more electricity is uh, independent power producer. And then they went in secret, signed agreement with this independent power producer to buy electricity four, five, six times over the market price for 30 years, and we cannot look, we cannot see this contract. Done in complete secrecy, the me, I mean, they signed, I understand, over $50 billion. It's more than in, $60 billion now. In long-term contracts that we're gonna be paying over the next 40 years. It hit the news uh, Just last a week, week or so ago. They talked about a number of $1 billion, it's gonna cost us $1 billion. 16 and a half billion. Yeah, the real, the real number is 16 and a half to 20 billion over the, a billion a year for the next 20 years, and it's gone, gone from the news in a flash. Yeah. A billion a year of our money and to these. This is how the people of this province are being fleeced by this corporation. Here is an article from Government Review put private power in the spotlight. August 20, 2011. And according to this article, 
one gigabyte, gigawatt hours of electricity produced by BC Hydro in 2010 cost $7 million. And one gigawatt hours uh, produced by IPP cost $63 million. Nine times higher. And we're paying. And nine, we are paying. And we are paying. Higher, yeah. And we are obliged to pay for next 20, 30 years with these contracts. This is fraud. This is swindling, swindlers in power. And if it is the rule of law, the country of rule of law, rule of law, they say, nothing happened to these crooks. They are helping each other to, get, to, 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 to run away from it. Look at the issue of the money laundering, casino expansion, money laundering, and fentanyl crisis. Every day, four people in this province are dying because of fentanyl overdose. Who expanded the gambling? NDP in 1990s, his, uh, Mr. 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 John Horrigan mentor, Dan Miller, was in charge of it and pushing it through. He himself was a lobbyist for the expanded gambling. Mr. Horrigan. Mr. Horrigan himself. And then the liberals really flourishing it. When you say he was a lobbyist for expanded gambling, do you he, mean he, he was... Went, he went into, in, in 2004, lobbied the, the city, city of Vancouver City Hall. As to, a paid lobbyist? As a paid lobbyist, yes. So this, this is, and that's why they don't want an inquiry. Yes, they prevent an inquiry because they are going to be exposed that these two sets of stooges of corporations are working for their interests. And one of the reasons is that if you have, if you create money, income for the government through gambling, then you can give a huge tax cut to the rich. And that's what they have done. <laughs> see, this, see this, this, these, are the, these are the policies, corporate, corporate dictate. NDP come to power and put Faisal Mahlar, the Fraser Institute guy, that What's is his name? Faisal, Faisal Ma Mahlar, Mahlar, okay. Mahlar or, who was worked for the Fraser as, Institute. As a deputy minister for, for, uh, for job, and, um, job and trade and technology. NDP, the leftist, the so-called leftist government, put it the, the most right-wing ideologue that are getting paid by Koch brothers, Fraser Institute is getting money from American tycoons. You put him in charge of jobs? <laughs> <laughs> and he was a member of the Fraser Institute or he worked oh, for Oh yes, he was, and he was a member of Fraser Institute. Then he became the editor of the Vancouver Sun. You see the connection between the big corporate interests, the media, and the parties that we are supposedly freely choosing. So, so it's very clear to me, if we want to come out of this nightmare, we have to stop listening to this gang. The corporations doesn't want us to, the, the media doesn't want uh, us to, to, to see what's really going on. Here is an article by Vaughn Palmer, 17 March 2018. NDP continue its, its slide toward pragmatism. Three announcements under shift from the activism to actual governing. And then what he's saying, this is about the LNG. The so he's saying it all makes sense. Yeah, Vaughan it makes Palmer. sense. Thank you, Vaughn Palmer. Uh, far, far from a uh, uh, suggesting that the fracking days were numbered, she emphasized that the review by three independent scientists was being undertaken with support of industry. Quote, we welcome the opportunity to do this, confirmed Jeff Morrison of the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers. So they are doing a, a review of the fracking effect. They put the public health, we are not going to review effect on public health, but we are going to review the fracking by three geologists. Geologists are not biologists or ecologists or, or watershed scientists. You know, geologists are usually work with oil and, 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 and mining industry. And then, who is supervising this review? The Canadian Association of Petroleum Indust Producers. This is done under the NDP? Under the NDP. And Vaughn Palmer thinks it's... And Vaughn Palmer said this is wonderful because it's not activism. Yeah. This, is, this is pragmatism. Yes. I don't know how we're going to get out of this, folks, but it better happen quickly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mehdi. You're welcome. And thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.